And tonight we have a story from Florida where a retired firefighter named Bob was summoned by a neighbor with a unusual problem. There was a big bear in her backyard. And when he rounded the corner, he knew he was going to leave this one alone. That's a big bear. <laughs> That's a huge bear. A huge bear indeed with an equally huge appetite. As Bob started snapping pictures, he noticed that the bear had hauled a 20 pound bag of dog food from another neighbor's garage and was chowing down. Bob couldn't keep the camera still because he started laughing. The bear, like a person who has eaten too much, was tossing and turning. Repositioned three or four times, stretched out. It just laid there. And eventually dozed off. The bear eventually then walked off into the woods where we can only assume he did what bears do in the woods. This is just the latest in a series of Ursine events proving that bears are pretty much just like us. They eat too much, they fall asleep, they chill in Daytona Beach. Got in a hammock, laying back like it was a, a tourist or something, and something spooked him. And he ran right through there, fast. And then I said, well, he's gone. Half an hour later, he come back and there he is in the hammock again. That's a great photo. Sometimes they also want to change a pace, maybe a nice cabin in Utah. The bear went and took this handle and put it down, and I saw the handle moving inside. And that bear came right in the house and stood right here and, and looked around. Bears can now use door handles. I am completely comfortable with that. That will not haunt my dreams at all. I'm also cool with the fact that bears are in cities as well, sometimes taking leisurely strolls through Los Angeles. He came down that driveway, down Mayfield, and now he's on Briggs, and now it looks like he's got turning into another driveway here. We're going to kind of maneuver around and see if we can get another shot of him. But, uh, yeah, he would definitely, uh-oh, uh-oh, okay, we got someone uh, resident there. Yeah, that's a fun afternoon, just a walk in and a text in, and minding your own business. I was texting my boss that I would be late from work, something is going on, and I'm coming down the stairs, and I see the bear coming up the stairs towards me. So I turn back and run for my life. <laughs> Clearly, the lesson of all, is, all of this is that the bears are taking over, and only one person, one person so far has the fortitude to stand up to them, Carl from California. Here's his tale, possibly tall, of his bear encounter. I ain't running from nothing. I never have in my whole life, and I ain't gonna start now for some damn bear. And I cussed at him. Yeah, get out of here, He looked at me like, go F yourself. Carl landed a whirling haymaker, punching the bear right in the face. Man or beast that I run from ain't been born, and his mama's already dead. When you make a threat, it's particularly powerful to have a little tiny dog in the crook of your arm. I see no need to resort to a whirling haymaker like he did when a 20-pound bag of dog food seems to be just as effective, at least on the ridiculous.